Hello and welcome to Raider Baseball Field, where Liberty Hill will take on the Rouse Raiders in this District 25-5A matchup, which is a very influential game for both programs going into the playoff district seating. Both teams currently tied for third. Cedar Park in first. Leander in second. Ba second, excuse me. The winner of this game would presumably go into a tie for third with Georgetown or an independent third place, but the loser of this game will likely miss the playoffs or scrape by with a four seed, which is always a bad thing as you're going to be playing a one seed your first round of the playoffs. You join us here during the coaches' meeting, and we are going to, as we await the start of this game, like I said, Both teams come into this game 5-3 and three in district play, looking to improve to 6-3 and three tonight with a win. Looks like our coaches meeting is just about finished, so we'll get you on to starting lineups in the National Anthem. Of course, as always, we'll join the PA. You can listen in to those starting lineups, and I'll say them afterwards in case you were able, unable to catch them. Ball game looks to get started a little early. Always good to see. As these crowds continue to fill for this district matchup. Beautiful evening here in Leander. Mid-70s, sun directly behind us. A little breeze out of left field. As I say a little breeze, a little gust comes in. It's a moderate win tonight. Shouldn't it play too big of a factor as we saw last Saturday against Eastview. We're just waiting to start this game. Waiting those starting lineups and national anthems. Both teams are ready. Liberty Hill will be at the plate first as we are the away team tonight. Rouse will head to the field and they'll look to get revenge after losing their second game of the, this year their second district game of this year to the Panthers earlier this year at Panther Stadium Panthers able to win that game 5-2 to two off a very strong pitching performance from Blaze Milam Milam able to go the distance, go 7 innings allow just those 2 runs and make a very good start of his district career He's been able to follow that up this season. And has really been one of the keys to this Panther pitching staff. But tonight, instead, we will see the senior Connor Sherburn. Sherburn has made several relief appearances, but he'll get his first district start tonight. Sherburn has a very nice fastball, 12-6 curveball combination. And with that said, we'll head go to the PA for the starting line of the National Anthem. The Panthers and the Rouse Raiders. Visiting for Liberty Hill. We have batting number one, number 12, shortstop Ryan Leary. Number two, number 23, our designated hitter, Amden Thomas. Number three, we have number eight, second baseman, Jackson Knox. Number four, we have number five, center fielder, Logan Dyer. Coming up fifth, we have number 10, third baseman, Cade Neutwander. Coming up sixth, we have number 24, first baseman, Cash Durkin. Coming up seventh, we have number three, your left fielder, Chase Maxwell. Number seven, right fielder Jack Stanton. Hola. Is that Yeah. And uh, coming up ninth, you have the catcher, number one, Carson Riley. Pitching tonight for Liberty Hill, we have Connor Sherburn, number 15. And the rest of the 
Commander Panthers. Liberty Hill. I meant the Liberty Hill Panthers. And now for your Rouse Raiders. We have number three right fielder, Keegan Solomon. Number nine, your catcher, Carter Heinrich. Number one, Drew Forsell. We have number 17, Colby Diaz. Next up, number eight, Oscar Salazar, left field. CH tonight, number 34, Colin Torrejo. Number 12, playing second base, Joe Sparshu. Followed by his brother, number 23, Lucas Sparshu. Playing shortstop. Got number six, Jay Galeba playing center field tonight. And your pitcher, number 28, Andrew Kinhill. And the rest of your Rouse Raiders ready to take on the Liberty Hill Panthers. Coaches tonight for Rouse Raiders, Coach Chad Crampeen and Coach Josh Harris. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. the starting lineups and the national anthem here at Rouse High School. On the mound for the Raiders is going to be number 20, Andrew Kithill, a strong throwing lefty, or righty, excuse me, wow. He will be a righty. He'll look to shut down the Panthers and allow the Raiders to move to 6-3 and three in district play. The Raiders on last Saturday able to beat the Leander Lions 6-0. If you remember, Liberty Hill fell to the Lions in their first round of district play, 3-2, to two, and the bottom of the seventh went in with a 2-1 lead, unable to close it out there, unfortunately lost that game, and really has put a, a Leander team in a position to make the playoffs when they were originally not expected to even be in contention here. But both teams tonight looking for the win and looking to help their playoff seeding, really looking to win as many games as you can here in the back half of district. Liberty Hill really wanting to win this one and move into Friday's game at home against Cedar Park. Look for an upset there. But tonight, 
Leading off for the Panthers, as always, going to be number 12, Ryan Leary. He'll play short. Bank second, number 23, Anna Thomas, a designated hitter. Bank third, number 8, second baseman, Jackson Knox. Batting fourth, the cleanup hitter, number 5, Logan Dyer. Batting fifth, the third baseman, Kay Neunschwander. Batting sixth, the first baseman, Cash Durkin. Batting seventh, the left fielder, Chase Maxwell. Batting eighth, the right fielder, Jack Stavanoa. And the batting ninth, the catcher, Carson Riley. As I said in pregame, Connor Sherburn will take the nod on the mound for Liberty Hill. We'll look to shut down the Raider offense in this one. We're just about ready for first pitch here. As the catcher for the Raiders, Carter Heinrich makes his throw down. And Ryan Leary will step up to the plate. Leary, a Texas State commit. He's going to be playing against one of his fellow Texas State commits and Kobe Diaz, the third baseman for the Raiders. Diaz only a junior, Leary a senior. Diaz will join him there in two years. Leary in the box now, facing Kit Hill. Kit Hill working from the windup. His first pitch, fastball, high for ball one. Raiders looking to retire Liberty Hill fast here. Don't want something like happened the last time where they were able to walk a few. Let Liberty Hill score early. Leary hits that one foul down the right field line. It will blow foul, as it looked like their right fielder, Solomon, was chasing it. Solomon able to, almost nearly able to make the catch, just a little out of his reach there, and it'll give Leary a second chance. Leary with a 1-1 count. Step back in the box against Kit Hill. Kit Hill, pitch, that fastball, high. Chased by Leary. Brings the count to one and two. One-two count for Leary. He'll have to stay alive here. Pitch from Kithill. That curveball hit high into right field. Solomon under it, going back. Able to make the catch for out number one. Good start for the Raiders. As last time, if you remember, that first inning, walked a few, few hits from the Panthers, had to pull their pitcher in the first inning, had to pull their pitcher Norris, I remember, and that was just Liberty Hill able to hang on and get their win against then state-ranked Rouse. Now Thomas at the plate, that first pitch from Kit Hill on the outside corner for strike one. Thomas looking to get something started for Liberty Hill in the top of the first here. That pitch way outside will bring one to one. Nice breeze blowing in from left field today. Not influential very much, but a good for the crowd. That one hit high in the air. Down the right field line. It looks to be foul. First baseman for the Raiders. Unable to make the catch. That looked to be Forsell. Forsell just running back on it. Had it in his glove, popped out, unable to secure it there. Brings Th Thomas, like Leary, a second chance. He'll look to get something solid on the ground, in the air. Something on the line if it's in the air. And he'll look to have a base hit here. Thomas coming, still in that DH spot as he's been in the last few games. Pitch from Kim Kithill. That fastball high and outside brings the count to 2-2. Two and two. Liberty Hill with one out in the inning after Ryan Leary popped out into right field. 2-2 Two -two count for Thomas. Pitch from Kit Hill. That fastball grounded to second base. Raiders able to field it cleanly. Make the throw over to first for out number two. Now two outs. Jackson Knox will head to the plate. Knox, the Tyler Junior College commit. I've heard his play with a few of these Raiders on summer ball teams. So he'll look to get a, get a solid base hit here against some of his colleagues. This pitch from Kit Hill. First pitch curveball it looked like in there for strike one. O one count to Knox. Kit Hill working from the windup still. That pitch lined up the middle for a single. Knox able to take that fastball down the middle, hit it right back at Kit Hill, and into center field for a single. That two out single by Knox will bring up Logan Dyer, the center fielder. Sophomore center fielder has gotten every start 
in district play and has been at that cleanup hole for the majority of them. Sorry. Not our Dyer, excuse me. In the box now. Cahill working from the stretch for the first time. Pitch to Dyer. Fastball swung on and missed by Dyer. Works his count to 0-1. Knox on first base for Liberty Hill. Liberty Hill looking to keep the inning alive. <coughs> Excuse me. With Dyer at the plate. Kit Hill. Set. Picks Knox. Knox back in time. <coughs> Kit Hill checks Knox. Comes set. He'll step off. Not liking what he sees. Okay, he'll now set. Pitch to Dyer. Fastball popped out of play. Into the field behind the baseball field here at Rouse High School. Rouse High School off of Crystal Falls in between Ronald Reagan and 183. First time I've been back here. And it certainly won't be the last. This pitch from Kit Hill. That, that curveball's in the dirt. It brings a count to 2-2 two and two for Dyer. 1-2, excuse me. Knox on first base. Dyer at the plate. Kit Hill set. Kit Hill the pitch. That one lined into left field by Dyer. And Liberty Hill will now have runners on first and second and bring up the third baseman, Cade Noonschwander. Now batting number 10, Cade Noonschwander. Noonschwander, another sophomore in this starting lineup, has gotten all the district starts, a phenomenal fielder at third base, and will look to make an impact at the plate here. Dyer on first base. Knox on second for Liberty Hill. Liberty Hill looking to score here in the top half of the first. Get Hill set. First pitch to Noonschwander. That one popped way up by Noonschwander. Knox will round third. Short stop under it. Able to make the catch for round number three for the Raiders. And we'll head to the bottom of the first inning here at Rouse High School. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports, there's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here to this District 25 5A matchup between the Liberty Hill Panthers and the Rouse Raiders. Both teams 5-3 and three coming into this game. Looking to go to 6-3. and three. Both currently tied for third in district. If you were here for pregame, I discussed those district implications. Cedar Park at 1, Leander at 2 right now. Three-way tie for third in Rouse, Liberty Hill, Georgetown. Whichever team wins this game, will be putting themselves in a very good position for that playoff hunt. As many of you know, top four seeds, top four teams will go into district, seeded one through four, and they'll play our by district, their one through four seed. So for the four seed, we'll play the one seed. So we really want to be higher than that. Liberty Hill really looking for a win here to have a good shot at the three seed or two seed, or potentially even that one seed with a few Cedar Park losses. On the mound tonight for Liberty Hill, it's going to be Connor Sherburn. Sherburn getting his first district start of the year. Sherburn a very solid righty. New to Liberty Hill this year. Looking to make his first district start after some several good relief appearances. Or has a nice four-seam curveball combination, and this will be his first pitch. That fastball in the zone for strike one as he's facing number three, Keegan Solomon, for the Raiders. Sherburn able to use that curveball in all counts. May see one here. 
Pitch from Sherburn. That curveball in there for strike two. I don't want to say I called it, but I may have called that one. 0-2 count now for Sherburn, working on Solomon. He may throw something in the dirt or maybe a chase fastball on this one. Pitch from Sherburn. That fastball way outside, fouled off by Solomon into the Raider dugout as a few Raiders jump out of the way of that hard hit foul ball. Sherburn working from the windup against Solomon. We'll look to retire him with this one. Sherburn winds up, delivers. That curveball, a little low for the home plate umpire. Not a bad spot to miss on an 0-2 count. Now 1-2. and two. Sherburn. Pitch here. Ground ball. Past Noon Schwander. Leary diving stop. Won't be able to make the throw. And Solomon will reach on a leadoff single. Good stop by Leary. Unable to make that throw in time as it was a little slow ground ball into the hole there. Past Noon Schwander. Now at the plate. Carter Heinrich for the for the Raiders. Solomon on first base. Sherburn from the from the stretch now. First pitch. Fastball low. Brings the count to one and zero. Liberty Hill looking for a ground ball double play here. Sherburn looking to keep this game tied through one. Shows bunt, pulls back on a curveball out of the zone. Brings the count to 2-0. and oh. One, two count for Heinrich. Shows bunt again. Pulls that one back. On a ball on the inside half of the plate. Brings the count. Appears to 3-0. and Sherburn looking to not allow the four-pitch walk here. That pitch from Sherburn. It's a fastball. Low. They're going to call a ball. And now the Raiders will have runners on first and second. Working on Sherburn. Runners on first and second base for the Raiders. Drew Forsell at the plate with runners in scoring position. Sherburn trying to get Liberty Hill out of it. First pitch to Forsell. Shows bunt. That one's foul down the first baseline. After that fouled bunt, Forsell will go to an 0-1 count. The Raiders trying to move those runners over, move them from first and second to second and third, and have two runners in scoring position for this commit, Texas State commit, Colby Diaz. Sherburn steps off as Forshall showed bunt. Now Sherburn back on the rubber. Takes a sign from Carson Riley, tonight's starting catcher. Now set. Forshall shows bunt early, pulls back now. Hits it into left field. Maxwell. Able to field it cleanly. Solomon will round third. He'll be up at the plate. Play at third base. Runner is safe. So now the Raiders lead one to nothing with runners on second and third. Not the start you wanted if you were Liberty Hill. But they an excellent start for your Raider fans. Leary will go talk to Sherburn. Leary's done a very good job this year of calming down his pitchers in some situations. He'll look to do the same here. But no outs here. Colby Diaz steps into the plate. The Raider cleanup hitter with two runners in scoring position. That being Forsell and Heinrich. Sherburn, first pitch to Diaz. Fastball outside for ball one. Sherburn working from the windup with the runner on third base. That pitch is high for ball number two. A 
A 2-0 count for Diaz. Working on Sherburn. Liberty Hill trying to minimize the damage here in the bottom of the first. Pitch. That curveball. Fouled out of play by Diaz. Works the count to 2-1. and one. Sherburn. Trying to find a way out of this for Liberty Hill. That pitch hit high into right field. Stavanoa tracking it. Heinrich will tag. Stavanoa unable to make the play out in right field. And that'll be strike number two. Diaz most certainly would have had an RBI sack fly there. Just Stavanoa unable to make the play. And this could come back to either help or hurt the Panthers. I say it could help, as that probably most certainly would have been a sack fly RBI. And if they were able to retire Diaz here and somehow manage to keep the runners stranded, that could have impacted them positively. Now the pitch from Sherburn. That curveball in there called strike three for round number one. Sherburn able to ring up Diaz there on a curveball on the inside part of the zone. Now, one out for Liberty Hill. Still two runners on for the Raiders. And now Oscar Salazar, the freshman for the Raiders at the plate. That curveball, same one he threw to Diaz in there for strike one. Sherburn, as I said earlier, really able to use that curveball. Can almost bail him out of situations. Sherburn now, still working from the windup. That next pitch, curveball, grounded to Leary. Runner going home. Leary unable to field it cleanly. And a runner will score for the Raiders. Salazar will reach first base. Leary just unable to pick that one up cleanly. And now the Raiders will lead 2 to 0. Now runners on the corners for Colin Correjo. Raiders off to a hot start tonight. Liberty Hill will have to bounce back in the later innings. Really looking to get out of this one soon. Sherburn, first pitch to Correjo, fouled, fouled bunt attempt by Correjo, trying to lay down a bunt, and he'll get an earful from coach Chad Krimpen. Now an 0-1 count to Correjo, Sherburn trying to retire him, Sherburn set, pitch to the plate, that one fouled off by Correjo, and I'll work the count to 0 and 2. O2 count for Correjo. Connor Sherburn, the senior pitcher, trying to retire him with this one. Probably see a fastball outside here. Pitch is a fastball right off the outside half, a little too far for ball one. A 1-2 count for Correjo. Runners on the corners for the Raiders. Pitch from Sherburn. That fastball bounces in the dirt. Good good block by Riley. And they'll let Salazar steal second base there. Now a 2-2 count for Correjo. Sherburn needs to focus on the batter. Retire him. Get the Liberty Hill Panthers to two outs. And we'll have some breathing room. Pitch from Sherburn. That fastball little off the plate. Works the count to full. A tight zone tonight from the home plate umpire. Not going to call that two or three inches off the outside half. Sherburn, wind up, pitch. That one's fouled into right field. Off the light pole. And will bounce back into fair play. Jackson Knox will go and toss it over to the Raiders dugout. Sherburn, pitch, curveball, fouled off by Correjo, into the Liberty Hill dugout now. Correjo doing a good job of staying alive in a full count here with one out in the bottom half of the first. 
If you're just joining us, Raiders leading 2-0 after some early offense in the bottom of the first inning. That pitch from Sherburn popped. Noontroner looks to be under it by the Panther dugout, and he'll make the catch for out number two. Now at two outs, Liberville has that aforementioned breathing room. And he put out here from Sparshu will retire the inning and will leave two stranded for the Raiders. Joe Sparshu here, second baseman tonight. First pitch from Sherburn. Fastball a little high for ball number one. Sherburn working from the windup with that runner on third. And this pitch here is grounded weakly, fouled down the third baseline. Neuschwander will field it, throw it back to his pitcher, with Sparshu having a count of one and one. Sherburn pitch to Sparshu. That curveball in the zone for strike number two. Wouldn't be surprised to see another one with this one. Sherburn with a 1-2 count to Sparshu. Looking to get the Panthers out of this bottom half of the first. Pitch, curveball, grounded to Leary. Leary able to make the clay. Will throw across a diamond for out number three. Good throw by Leary there. Able to come back after the air and make the play to get Liberty Hill out of that inning. Leaving two runners on for the Raiders. I am Jason Hebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. I loved playing high school sports. I loved the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, all the pageantry, and I wanted to keep playing. But I graduated. No colleges called, and neither did the pros. So, to stay close to the game I loved, I decided to become a high school official. You know, a referee. When I played high school sports, I learned the importance of integrity, good sportsmanship, and respect for the rules. Now as a high school official, I get to help model these same values to others. Maybe the colleges and the pros didn't call, but the kids in Texas did. And now, I'm enjoying the competition, the camaraderie, the bands, the crowds, and all the pageantry of high school sports all over again. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Welcome back here to Rouse High School. The Raiders able to take two in the bottom half of the first after some strong offensive performances by Solomon Heinrich and Colby Diaz. Back on the mound for the Raiders is Andrew Kithill looking to keep the Panthers limited whereas Liberty Hill will look to score a few here in the top of the second inning leading off for the Panthers is going to be number 24 Cash Durkin Durkin the junior first baseman looking to start something for Liberty Hill has had a little bit of a slow district season will look to change that around tonight that fastball on the outside corner Called strike one. You can hear the displeasement here from the Panther fans. Felt that one was a little outside. This next pitch from Kithill grounded sharply to the first baseman by Durkin. Forcel able to make the play, and Durkin will be out for out number one. After the ground out from Durkin, bring in number three, Chase Maxwell, sophomore left fielder. Maxwell. Getting the start tonight. May have had a like rest day last Saturday against Eastview. Has been in the starting lineup for most of these games so far. First pitch to Maxwell. Curveball from Kit Hill. In for strike one. Kit Hill from the windup. Pitch to Maxwell. That curveball swung on and missed. Brings a count to 0-2. 0-2 count for Maxwell. He'll look to stay alive here against Kit Hill. The Raider ace. Kit Hill, pitch here. That curveball. Called strike three. Four out number two. Three straight curveballs to Maxwell. Resulted in three straight strikes 
and Hill will go back to the Panther bench. Liberty Hill, unable to have any success tonight, really, against Kit Hill, other than that single in the first inning by Dyer and Knox. Now Stavano at the plate, first pitch from Kit Hill. Fastball high and away for ball one. Beautiful night here at Rouse High School, mid 70s. Sun, not a cloud in the sky. That fastball outside brings a count to 2 0. Hopefully it stays this way this week as we are expecting a little bit of rain as a cold front heads through the state. Hopefully that won't affect our game Friday against Cedar Park as that fastball is fouled back by Stavano for strike one. Once again, join us Friday. We'll play Cedar Park at home. Liberty Hill will look to take on the state ranked Timberwolves and take a win to help their district seeding. This pitch from Kit Hill. That curveball in there. Four strike two. Brings the count to two and two. And Stavano will have to defend here. Kit Hill. Pitch to Stavano. That fastball high and away. Works the count to full. Full count for Stavanoa. Kit Hill. Pitch. Curveball outside. Stavanoa will jog down to first base. Good eye from Stavanoa there. So that curveball couldn't quite bend into the zone for Kit Hill. One second here as I try to get our computer plugged in. First pitch to Carson in the left center field. Center fielder able to make the play for the Raiders and now bring it to the middle or the bottom of the second inning. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student-athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here to Rouse High School, folks, where I have just fixed our computer issue problem you know all as always was my fault forgot to turn on the power strip that my computer was plugged into and I didn't notice because the only outlet used on that power strip was for the computer charger we're back we will not be lost I looked down saw my computer battery went from 65 to 18 and was going a little bit on panic mode but we are back here for the bottom half of the second inning. Sherburn back on the mound to face the Raiders. Looking to keep them in check and keep Liberty Hill in this ball game. Sherburn working from the windup. Will face Lucas Sparshu. At first pitch from Sherburn in there for strike one. Sherburn. Second pitch. Fastball grounded weakly to Leary. Leary able to field it cleanly. Make the throw across the diamond. Four out number one. Leary bounce back well after that first error in the first inning. As we are now in the bottom of the second. With one out now. For Jake Aleppa, the Raiders center fielder. 
the nine hole hitter for the Ra Rouse Raiders. First pitch from Sherburn. That fastball. Grounded foul down the third baseline. Four strike one. That curveball from Sherburn outside works the count two one and one. Liberty Hill looking to calm down after allowing two in the bottom of the first. This pitch from Sherbert is blooped kind of into right center field. Knox able to go out and make the play for out number two. Good catch there by Knox. Able to go out into the grass. Backtracking, able to jump up and make the catch for out number two. Now we're back to the leadoff hitter for the Raiders. Number three, Keegan Solomon, the right fielder, has gotten some action today from the Liberty Hill offense. And he'll look to continue his success at the plate after reaching in the first after a single pass Nunschwander. First pitch from Sherburn. Fastball a little high for ball number one. Sherburn working from the windup with nobody on. Pitch. Into left field. Maxwell coming in on it. Able to make the diving catch for out number three. We are heading to the third inning here after a fast Panther inning. For after a fast Panther inning, excuse me. I am Jason Timmer and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Meet Josh. Hi everybody. Josh is a high school basketball player, solid shooter, great teammate. Hey, don't forget my tenacious D. And he's my son. Oh. So, what does Josh do to be the best basketball player he can be? I play tennis. Studies show that student athletes here in Texas who play more than one high school sport are more likely to excel. Tennis does more than improve Josh's condition. It gives him a fresh competitive outlet, reduces the risk of injury by cross-training, and introduces him to different coaching techniques and new friends. Don't get me wrong, hoops are my first love. Tennis just gives me a little break. So when the new season begins, Josh isn't burned out on basketball. He's eager to play, and you can see the difference in his game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. You are back here at Rouse High School for this District 25-5A matchup between your Liberty Hill Panthers and the Rouse Raiders. Both teams coming in this game 5-3 and three in district play, really needing wins to help their playoff seating as we approach the end of district play here in just a few weeks. Still on the mound for the Raiders. He's looked really good. Andrew Kithill, the dominant righty. But... The top of the Panther order will be up to face him and will look to start the scoring spree for Liberty Hill. Of course, leading off for the Panthers is Ryan Leary. Leary will look to start something here for Liberty Hill as they're currently trailing 2-0, looking to creep back up and take the lead against the Raiders. In their first matchup, Liberty Hill able to win 5-2 based on a very strong pitching performance from Blaze Milam as the first pitch to Leary is a curveball fouled back for strike number one. Very strong pitching performance from Blaze Milam and a, and a decent offensive output able to hold on and win that first matchup 5-2 in mid-March. Now Liberty Hill looking to respond and take this second game of the series. That one, a diving catch on the first base line by Forsell will steal Leary of extra bases. Nothing you can do there if you're Leary. A hard hit line, or a hard hit line drive down the first base line is stolen by Drew Forsell. Great play from the Raider first baseman. He'll bring up number 23, Andon Thomas. Thomas, the as many of you know, the Panthers middle linebacker in football, trying to start something for the baseball team here. That curveball way outside brings the count to 1-0. Thomas with two D1 offers as of now from the Naval Academy, or the Army Academy, excuse me, as that line drive is lined past the second baseman for a single. 
I'll finish my thought on Thomas. Thomas with offers from Texas Southern and West Point. I'm sure he'll bring in more as he does some training camps this summer and also plays next year as a two-time defensive MVP for Liberty Hills Football District. But now at the plate, number eight, Jackson Knox. Knox able to single in his first at-bat up the middle. We'll look to have success here against Kit Hill in his second at-bat. Thomas on first base for the Panthers. Kit Hill working from the stretch. First pitch to Knox, fastball high for ball number one. Knox committed to Tyler Junior College to continue his baseball career. He'll undoubtedly, undoubtedly look to transfer after two years from that junior college into a major D1 program. Pitch from Kit Hill. Runner going, Thomas going. Good throw. Thomas able to beat it out after a good slide, and he'll steal second base. Knox at the plate for Liberty Hill. 1-1 one, one count with one out here in the top of the third. Kit Hill set. Checks Thomas. Goes to the plate. That curveball hits the bottom of the zone for strike number two. Kit Hill doing a good job, like Sherburn, able to use that curveball in any situation. With a 1-2 count. He'll, he'll attack Knox here. Pitch. That one hit high. Popped. Forceful at first base. Calling it. Able to make the catch for out number two. While we have a minute here, I would like to thank Academy Sports and Outdoors for being the presenting sponsor of Vibe Live this spring for all the ways you love to play. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your local Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Thank you, Academy. As Dyer steps up to the plate, runner in scoring position in Thomas. First pitch to Dyer, curveball. Hits the outside part of the zone on a curveball for strike one. Kit Hill taking a sign from Heinrich. Set. Pitch to Dyer. That fastball in the dirt. Works a count to one and one. With two outs here in the top of the third. Dyer looking to drive in a run for Liberty Hill and get them on the scoreboard. Start cutting into that Rouse lead. Kit Hill. Pitch. That fastball high works count to two and one. Two one count for Dyer as Kit Hill toes the rubber. Taking a sign from Heinrich. Thomas on second base for the Panthers. Pitch. Fastball fouled back into the parking lot. Four strike two. Works Dyer's count to two and two. As he'll look to extend the inning for Liberty Hill and potentially drive in a run for the Panthers. Kit Hill set. Checks Thomas. Goes to the plate. Fastball. Hit the right field over the head. It appears. Over his head. Or no, able to make the over the shoulder catch is Solomon for out number three. Solomon in a full sprint back, able to just throw his glove out there and make the catch where everyone here thought it was over his head. Impressive play from Solomon, and we'll head to the bottom of the third here at Rouse High School as you were listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. I mean, they really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh. Today's student athletes are truly special. But there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games, too. 
like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Great call, Ralph. Yeah. Interested in becoming a licensed high school official? Go to highschoolofficials.com to learn more and begin the application process. Well, we are back here at Rouse High School. Sherburn on the mound for Liberty Hill. Looking to continue his strong work so far after a little shaky in his first inning. First pitch, curveball in the zone for strike one on Carter Heinrich. 0-1 count for Heinrich. Sherburn working from the windup, no runners on. That curveball fouled back, brings the count to 0-2 early for Heinrich. Sherburn will have a few to mess around here with. Wouldn't it be shocked to see a high fastball or a curveball outside? Sherburn winds up, pitch. That curveball on the inside half hit out of play down the left field line. Keeps the count at 0-2. Sherburn, working to Heinrich. This pitch, grounded up the middle. Knox not able to make the play as it took an awkward bounce off the pitcher's mound. And Heinrich will have a leadoff single. Real weird bounce there. Line drive straight into the pitcher's mound. Took an awkward redirect. Knox unable to handle it on that third hop. Brings it to number one, Drew Forsell. Forsell. Has made many plays today already at first base. Most notably that diving catch to steal Leary of extra bases. First pitch from Sherburn. Shows Bunt. Able to lay it down the first baseline. Sherburn makes a good play fielding. And he'll have a good throw over to Durkin for round number one. Good, good fielding job there by Sherburn. Able to go to his right down the first baseline. Now able to make a clean throw to Durkin. Also good throw from Durkin. And so they're always tough in that little slow reaction time sometimes. But one out, or no, it's one out. The scoreboard here is wrong. Sorry. One out here in the bottom of the third. Pitch to Diaz. That curveball is in there for strike one. Heinrich on second base for the Raiders. Sherburn working to Diaz. Pitch. That one lined at Leary. They're able to make the play. Will throw across the diamond. Four out number two. Diaz hit that ball hard. Just on a one hop to Leary. Leary able to make the play. And a clean throw across the diamond. Four out number two. With two outs, we'll have a courtesy runner for Heinrich, the catcher for the Raiders. And Oscar Salazar. Oscar Salazar, the freshman. I'll be at the plate. Last at bat, able to reach on a little bloop single. Liberty Hill will look to retire him with this one and head back to the plate. Sherburn, pitch, fastball, little outside, brings the count to 1 and 0. Sherburn taking a sign from Carson Riley. Checks Walsh on second base, the courtesy runner. Pitch. That one hit hard in the left field. Maxwell going back on it, able to make the catch for out number three. We are heading to the fourth inning here at Rouse High School in this game that's moving along. I am Jason Hebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Bike Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect. 
for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here to Rouse High School. Our Andrew Kithill is back on the mound for the Raiders after three scoreless innings, and he'll look to continue it here as the Panthers look to put one on the scoreboard and put themselves back in this ball game. Leading off for Liberty Hill this inning will be the third baseman, number 10, Caden Nunschwander. Nunschwander looking to make an impact at the plate and bring Liberty Hill closer to their sixth district win. Kit Hill finishing up his warm-up sequence. As Heinrich will make a good throw down to second base. Nunchwander will walk up to the plate now. And we're just a moment away from starting this top of the fourth inning. Starting it off for the Panthers, number 10, Cade Nunchwander. Nunchwander in the box now, facing Kit Hill for his second time. First pitch from Kit Hill. Fastball grounded to the shortstop by Nunchwander. Nunchwander running it down the line. Good throw by Sparshu, the shortstop, for out number one. Nunchwander first pitch swinging. Grounded a, grounded a ground ball, obviously, to shortstop. Sparshu, the Raiders shortstop, able to make a good throw across the diamond for out number one. Now at the play, number 24, Cash Durkin. Durkin, last at bat, hit a hard ground ball right at Forsell, the first baseman for the Raiders. First pitch swinging, swung on and missed on an outside fastball for strike one. Sorry, I just got laid on by B, but this pitch from Durkin. Two Durkin, excuse me. One, one count now. One, one count to Durkin. Durkin looking to start something for Liberty Hill here in the top of the fourth inning. Kid Hill on the mound for the Raiders. Pitch to Durkin. Curveball off the plate. Brings a count to two and one. Kid Hill working from the windup as he has all night. Pitch to Durkin. That fastball's outside. Brings the count to three and one. Liberty Hill looking for base runners as they're going to look to crawl their way back here from this 2 0 deficit in what has turned into a pitcher's battle aside from that first inning for the Raiders. That fastball swung on and missed by Durkin brings the count to full. Full count for Durkin, looking to find a way on here against Kithill. Pitch, fastball, hit down the line in the left field, gonna look to be out of play. It is, Durkin will stay alive. A little delay of play here as the Raiders are turned to their spots after chasing that foul ball. But now with a full count, Durkin take a practice swing. Step back into the box. Working on Kit Hill. Kit Hill pitched to Durkin. Curveball swung on and missed by Durkin. And now be out number two here in the top of the fourth. Now with two outs, Liberty Hill. Brings up number three, Chase Maxwell. Maxwell in his second at bat as well. Kit Hill, first pitch to Maxwell. That fastball, low, brings the count to 1-0. and Liberty Hill just needs a spark here against Kit Hill, the Raider ace. Looking to bring both teams looking for their sixth district win of the year. That one, hit into right center field by Maxwell. Solomon under it, able to make the catch for the Raiders. Or out number three. We are heading to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Rouse High School. 
Yeah, I am Jason Hebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Question. When you walk into the boardrooms of the most successful companies here in Texas, who do you meet? Answer. Men and women who play high school sports. Education-based high school sports give us more than athletes we can root for. They give us leaders we can depend on. Question. So, where will we find tomorrow's leaders? Answer. High school sports. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. This is what matters. This is beyond X's and O's. This is the difference mutual respect makes. This is what character looks like. This is what defines us in Texas. This is sportsmanship. School sports is not the outcome that matters most, but the way the games are played. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here to Rouse High School, where Connor Sherburn, the senior, is still on the mound. After four solid innings, after only allowing two runs in the bottom half of that first inning, where the whole team looked a little shaky, he settled in nicely, and will look to keep Liberty Hill within striking distance here in the bottom of the fourth. Our wind has shifted here a little bit. Wind blowing straight out of center field. Blowing in on us. And both teams. I have a little. Looks like we have a sub here for the Raiders. No, no sub. That's <laughs> designated here, Colin Correjo. Rejo in his second at bat against Sherburn will look to start something for the Raiders. Liberty Hill on the other hand really looking for a 1-2-3 inning and to put, have the opportunity to put some runs on the board. That one foul back here will roll into the parking lot and Carson Riley will go talk to Connor Sherburn. Probably talking about their sign package. Coach Kyle Bisher, the Liberty Hill pitching coach, has some complicated signs sometimes. Sometimes these pitchers and catchers struggle to get on the same page. Looks like they're, they've decided what they wanted to talk about. Riley back behind the plate, Sherburn on the mound, facing Correjo. Sherburn from the stretch, or from the windup, excuse me. That fastball's inside, it works the count to one and one. One one count for Correjo. Lead off batter for the Raiders here in the bottom half of the fourth. That one singled into center field. Dyer will field it cleanly. Correjo will have a Correjo, excuse me, will have a lead off single for the Raiders. That'll bring up number twelve, Joe Sparshu. It's Joe Sparshu at the plate now, the second baseman. The Sparshu brothers playing the middle infield for the Raiders. Now, Sparshu at the plate. Sherburn checks Correjo, delivers to Sparshu. Sparshu shows bunt, able to lay it down. Fielded foul by Riley for strike one. Sherburn with an 0 1 count to Sparshu. Looking to move Correjo over. Sparshu shows bunt, then pulls it back, then shows it again. Able to lay it down. Sherburn able to make the play at first base. Leary thought they could have had him at second. One out though. Now Correjo at second base. Now that is number 23, Lucas Sparshu. And now we'll bring up the other Sparshu brother, and Lucas Sparshu. Sparshu now at the plate after Sparshu bunted out to Sherburn. Correjo on second base for the Raiders. Huge lead at second base. Sherburn goes to the plate. 
That fastball is low for ball one. Crejo with a slightly smaller lead now. You may have heard me. <laughs> Sparshu at the plate. One out in the inning for Liberty Hill. Sherburn. Pitch. That one. Hit into center field. Dyer looks to be under it. Able to make that catch for out number two. Correjo, excuse me, Correjo on second base, not able to tag. So now Liberty Hill will have two outs, and the Raiders will have a runner on second base for the nine-hole hitter, Jake Aleppa. Two outs in the inning for Liberty Hill. Correjo on second base. Alipa at the plate. First pitch to Alipa is fouled back for strike one. Sherburn looking to keep the Raiders at two runs allowed. Sherburn set. Checks Correjo. Goes to the plate. Shown bunt. Sherburn unable to field it cleanly. And Al Alipa will reach first base on that bunt single. Now with the runners on the corners, he'll bring up the Raider leadoff hitter, Keegan Solomon. Solomon, runners on first and third. Raiders will may look to squeeze in a run here. Coach Chad Krempen giving his signs on third base. Solomon at the plate now. First pitch. High for ball number one from Sherburn. Liberty, if you're just joining us, the Roush Raiders leading 2 to nothing in this District 25-5 A matchup. Runners on the corners here in the bottom of the fourth looking to extend their lead. Liberty Hill looking to keep them at two. Pitch from Sherburn here. It's lined into left center. Maxwell going over. Able to make the catch for out number three. Very much needed catch there from Maxwell to keep the score at two as we'll head to the top of the fifth where Liberty Hill will look to score and close the gap here of this ball game. You're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Bike Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result, it transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here, Panther fans. To Rouse High School, where Liberty Hill currently trailing 2 to nothing on the Rouse Raiders here in this influential District 25-5A matchup. If you were here for pregame or even a little bit earlier in this game, you heard that both of these teams tied for third in District 25-5A, records of 5-3. and three. The winner of this game will likely be almost guaranteed a playoff spot as if the, if the rest of the district season goes well. The loser of this game will have to bounce back and win some harder ball games against very good clubs such as the Georgetown Eagles or the Cedar Park Timberwolves. Speaking about the Cedar Park Timberwolves, Liberty Hill will be playing them at home Friday night. You can listen here live at 7 o'clock. We'd love to have you listening, and I hope you enjoy it listening at home. Leading off for the Panthers here in the fifth inning, it's going to be Jack Stavanoa facing. Oh, that one. Stavanoa's going to reach here, it looks like. Bad throw. Stavanoa will stay at first base after a little roll is dug out there trying to stop his ankle. Excuse me. Let me explain that a little better. Stavanoa, first pitch swing, hit fastball off Kit Hill's leg, bounces away from the second baseman. Stavanoa able to reach on a leadoff single. Liberty Hill needs base runners. This is good for Liberty Hill. Now, 
Number one, Carson Riley. Carson Riley. Riley. Well, Riley and Coach Hutch gonna take a minute to make sure they're on the same page here. After a leadoff little ground ball single from Jack Stavanoa. Riley, the catcher of tonight's contest. Looking to help his pitcher in Sherburn. Hopefully add some Panther offensive spark here in the top of the fifth. Riley in the box now facing Kit Hill. Kit Hill from the stretch. First pitch to Riley. First pitch swinging. Fouled ball for strike one from Riley. On deck for Liberty Hill is the top of the order in Ryan Leary. Leary will look, if he can, to drive in some Panther runs. As a balk is called on Kit Hill there, they're going to get him on not coming set, I believe. Now, with a runner on second base, we'll really look here for a we'll look for a bunt here from Carson Riley. Many of you Panther fans know Coach Hutcherson really involved in using that bunt to move runners over. Not would be very surprised not to see it here. Riley shows bunt, able to lay it down. They'll call it foul, and I'll put Riley in 0-2 count. That one just kind of stopped off the bat of Riley. Just landed on the plate, which is a foul ball. Down 0-2 count, Riley will be swinging. He'll look to put something in play and move Stavanoa over to third. As Liberty Hill really looking to score here in the top of the fifth. Their best opportunity of the day. This pitch from Kit Hill. Curve ball. Low for ball one. Good eye from Riley. Rouse fans felt that one was in the zone. Now with a 1-2 count. Cahill steps off, not on the same, it's not on the same mind waves as Heinrich. Now set. Pitch. Fastball inside from Cahill. Brings the count to 2-2 two two for Riley. Riley, 2-2 count, back in the box. Jack Stavano on first base, or second base, after a leadoff single. Kit Hill pitch. Curveball swung on and missed by Riley for round number one. Strikeout will bring up Ryan Leary, who will look to drive in a run with Jack Stavano in scoring position. Coming up for the Panthers, number 12, Ryan Leary. Now, Leary at the plate, first pitch from Kit Hill. Fastball high for ball number one. Kit Hill committed to Warden Junior College, looking to strike, looking to retire the fellow collegiate commit here in Ryan Leary. Kit Hill set now, checks Stavano, pitch to the plate. That fastball is low, works a count to 2 and 0. On deck for Liberty Hill is Andon Thomas in the hole would be Jackson Knox. Liberty Hill looking to put some base runners on and threaten the Raiders here in the top of the fifth. Kit Hill set. Pitch to Leary. That fastball bounces in the dirt. Brings the count to 3-0. Kit Hill may be a little afraid here to throw to Leary. Leary is a smart batter, hence why he bats the leadoff. He'll take the walk if it's awarded to him and hope his fellow Panther teammates can reward him down the line. Kit Hill set. Looks at Stavanoa, goes to the plate. That fastball outside. A four-pitch walk for Ryan Leary. That four-pitch walk puts runners on first and second for Liberty Hill. Brings up number 23 and then Thomas. Thomas has always had the potential to change a game with one swing. And I'd be lying if you weren't hoping for one here. 
anything in play will do for Thomas as Liberty Hill is really looking to score some runs here in the top half of this fifth inning. First pitch from Kit Hill. Fastball, grounded foul by Thomas. A little early on it. That'll work his count to 0-1. Only one out here in the top half of the fifth. Anything Thomas can do to move his runners over will be beneficial and bring up the three-hole hitter, Jackson Knox. Kit Hill set this pitch to Thomas. Hit down the left field line. It looks like it's roping foul. It is. He'll land. Now Thomas will have an 0-2 count. He'll have to stay alive against Kit Hill. Wouldn't be surprised from Kit Hill to see a curveball try to catch the outside corner. He's throwing that pitch well tonight. And he may look to use it as a backdoor curveball here to Thomas, the lefty. Leary on first base, Stavano on second for Liberty Hill, Thomas at the plate. Kit Hill on the mound for the Raiders, the pitch. That one grounded to second base. Raiders look to turn a double play. Thomas able to beat it out at first base. Oh, they're going to call him out. Wow. He looks safe to me. But with that call, we'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Liberty Hill will look to keep, will look to keep Rouse in check here in the bottom of the fifth. You were listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vipe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here to Rouse High School. If you're just joining us, this is an important District 25 5A game between the Liberty Hill Panthers and the Rouse Raiders. The Raiders currently leading 2 to nothing, scoring both those runs in the bottom of the first inning, and this game has been really quiet offensively since then. Both pitchers, Andrew Kithill for the Raiders and Connor Sherburn for Liberty Hill, have really dialed it in. And Sherburn for Liberty Hill will have to keep it dialed in here in the top of the sixth. Bottom of the fifth, excuse me. Liberty Hill running out of time offensively. We'll look, to, we'll, we'll look to keep Rouse at two runs to increase their chances of coming back in this ballgame. Sherbert, first pitch. Grounded to Leary. Leary able to field it clean. He'll make the throw across the diamond for out number one. And Connor Heinrich will be retired. Now batting number one, three, four, seven. That ground out from Heinrich on a first pitch fastball. Brings up Drew Forsell, the defensive-minded first baseman, as we've seen tonight. Made a few diving catches. Really shaved some runs, or some hits, off that Panthers scorecard as we see a first-pitch curveball in there for strike one from Sherburn. Sherburn really looking good here in his first district start. Really capitalizing on his opportunity. As that curveball grounded to Neunschwander. Neunschwander able to play. Able to throw to first. Cleanly for out number two. Two ground outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And now the Raiders have two outs. Brings up their cleanup hitter, number 17, Colby Diaz. Yes, yeah, Coach Crimpton is going to challenge his call at first base there. He's going to probably argue that Durkin was off the bag. First base umpire had a very good angle on this. I doubt this one will get overturned here. If it was a bang-bang play, he may have a better chance. But when he's out by three or four steps, most umpires are going to give the doubt to that first baseman, trying not to get, you know, there's always some contact over that first base. If you think about it, a few years ago, Tim Hudson, the Braves pitcher, broke his ankle after a runner 
snapped his ankle when he landed on the bag at first base. Umpire's trying to protect the players here. And now stay and out for round number two. Diaz at the plate, first pitch from Sherbert, curveball, in there, strike one. Next pitch from Sherburn, also a curveball. A little low. Brings the count to one and one to Diaz. This pitch from Sherburn. Fastball outside. Brings the count to two and one. Diaz looking to start something here with two outs for the Raiders. Sherburn has really dialed in. And I'm really impressed with a senior here on his first district start of the year. Pitch from Sherburn. That one swung on, tipped by Diaz, brings the count to two and two. Really like to see these Panther, this Panther uh, pitching stat, excuse me, really dial it in against some solid teams in the Roush Raiders, because it it's very good for their playoff in potential if we had to play some best of three series where you know you have Milam, Sherburn, Bailey, you can run three starting pitchers there and really increase your chances of winning those later games as teams run their aces in that first game. So you can really win those second and third games if you happen to lose that first one. Sherburn with a full count to Diaz now. Pitch here. That one grounded to Leary. Leary able to feel it clean. He throw on the run to first base. Four out number three. Durkin held that one to make sure he was on the bag there. A little comedic there from the Cash Durkin, the junior. And we'll head to the sixth inning here at Rouse High School. I am Jason Hebner, and you're listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk off home runs on the diamond. Wide drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. Be white. We're back here, and we'd like to also remind you again, and we'd like to thank at here, over here at Vibe, at Academy Sports and Outdoors, for being the presenting sponsor of Vibe Live this spring. For all the ways you love to play, Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com, or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your local Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Looks like the... Does look like Andrew Kithill is back on the mound here for his sixth inning of work. We'll look to keep the Panthers at that goose egg, that zero. While Liberty Hill, on the other hand, really looking to score some runs as they're running out of time here as we head towards or as we head to the start of the sixth inning. Jackson Knox will be the leadoff batter for Liberty Hill, followed by Dyer, followed by Nunschwander in that order and Liberty Hill will look to put some base runners on like they did last inning and hopefully this time bring them across that home plate. Beautiful evening here at Rouse High School. Probably in the low 70s now. A nice breeze coming in from center field and just a gorgeous sunset behind us. Really is beautiful. Now Knox in the plate looking to start this top of the sixth inning for Liberty Hill. Facing Kit Hill, the Raider ace. First pitch, curveball. They're not. They're gonna say he did go. Wow, that's. I don't think that bat left his shoulder. But we'll call, have an 0-1 count for Knox. Liberty Hill has not had the best luck on that side of the umpires there, as that curveball nearly hits Knox, brings that count to one and one. The 1-1 one, one counts here. Knox looking to start something here for the Panther hopeful. That pitch is a fastball bounce in the grass in front of home plate there. Brings a count to 2-1. and one. Kit Hill working on Knox. Knox a single in his first at bat. Can't quite remember what he did his last at bat, but this is his third at bat against Kit Hill. Here's his pitch here. That curveball. Inside will be the call. 4-3-1 now. 
Now a 3-1 count. Two knocks. Knox will look to reach base somehow with this one. Pitch from Cahill. That one's hit in the left center field. Center fielder not able to find it. That ball is 20 feet behind him. Knox rounding second base. He's going to take three here. There'll be a play at third on the relay. Knox down. He'll be safe at third base on a leadoff triple by Jackson Knox. Knox actually smoked that curveball into left center field. The Raiders center fielder. Jake Aleppa had no clue where that ball is, was just kind of aimlessly running. The left fielder in Salazar had to go get it off the left center field wall. Liberty Hill, that ball may be out as we get a huge field here in the Raider ballpark. And now with a runner on third base, Liberty Hill will really look to capitalize this opportunity and they'll send Logan Dyer, the center fielder, to the plate to hopefully score the first run in this ball game. Kit Hill working from the stretch with Knox on third base. Anything past the infield should score Knox here. Relative good speed. Pitch from Cahill. That one popped high out of play. Out of play. Four strike one. Oh. Hit the bench. Near Mr. Near Mr. Neely here. Garrett Neely's dad. Always stands out to the side there to view his ball games. And he just narrowly avoided that one. Now an 0-1 count for D Dyer. Dyer looking to get an RBI here and bring Liberty Hill closer to this ball to this to the lead here. Excuse me. Kit Hill taking a sign from Heinrich. Finally agree on one. Here's the pitch. That fastball outside past Heinrich. Knox trying to steal a home and he will be out at the plate. He looks safe. I mean at the bang bang play. Knox could have been under that tag. But they're gonna call him out at the plate. And now we'll have one out after that leadoff triple by Knox. Good play by Heinrich, able to go back there and get it. Now with one out. Dyer at the plate with a 1-1 count. Some tough breaks for Liberty Hill tonight. Both luck-wise and just, you know how baseball is. This pitch from Dyer. That curveball glances the zone for strike two. Liberty Hill fans in disbelief on that one. Now Dyer looking to reach base. Pitch from Kit Hill. Grounded. Third base line. Dyer running it out. Throw across the diamond. Is in time from Diaz for out number two. The baseball gods tonight are just not on the Liberty Hill side. A series of unfortunate calls, unfortunate events tonight have really pondered their offense as they actually have more hits than the Raiders just unable to put anything up on that scoreboard. Now Noonchwander will face Kit Hill with two outs here in the top of the sixth facing the Raider ace. First pitch from Kit Hill. Curveball. Hits the outside corner for strike one. Pitch here. That curveball, not able to glance his zone, brings his count to one and one. With two outs here in the top of the six, Liberty Hill running out of time to win this district ball game. Pitch, that fastball way inside, brings the count to one and two. Two one, excuse me, I'm losing it out here. This pitch from Cahill. That one's fouled out of play. That'll bring it to two and two. Two-two count for Noonchuan are looking to keep the sixth inning alive. Liberty Hill running out of time to score and bring this ball game back in to contention. Kit Hill, the pitch from the windup. Curveball right down the pipe for strike number three. And that'll be the third out of the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth where Liberty Hill will hope to hold the Raiders and come back in the top half of the seventh to win this ball game. I'm Jason Keebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Honey, isn't it amazing? What? The sacrifice, the dedication, the grit. They really set an example, don't they? Oh, well, no question. Today's high school athletes are truly special. Not the athletes. Well, who? The officials. Oh, 
Today's student athletes are truly special, but there's something pretty great about the men and women who officiate their games too, like the way they're giving back to their communities. Officiating is a terrific way to stay in shape, meet new people, and stay connected to the game you love. But the biggest reason of all? We need more qualified high school officials here in Texas. And without them, the rest of us would have a whole lot less to cheer about. High school games need officials. High school sports need you. Welcome back here to Ross High School. Connor Schubert back on the mound looking to complete his sixth inning work. Has really done an exceptional job. But, you know, sometimes as a starting pitcher, you can't dictate what the offense has planned. Just unable to get any run support tonight as of now. Sherburn he's really done an exceptional job tonight. I can't express that enough how solid he's looked against this really good Raider team. He'll face Oscar Salazar here in the, to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning. First pitch from Sherburn. That fastball. Just a little inside for ball number one. Sherburn working from the windup. This pitch to Salazar. That one. Riley not able to squeeze it there. Bring the count to 2-0. Liberty Hill really needing to hold the Raiders here. And looking for a comeback in the top half of the seventh. Similar to what they had against Glenn just a few nights ago. Pitch here from Sherburn. That fastball found the zone. Brings the count to two and one. Sherburn pitch to Salazar. That one grounded. Fair over Nunchwander's head at third base. Salazar will have a leadoff single for the Raiders. A high second hop over Nunchwander. Nothing you can do there if you're Liberty Hill. And Salazar. Will reach base on that leadoff ground ball single. Now at the plate, the lefty, Colin Correjo, will look to expand or increase, for lack of a better words, this Raider lead. Liberty Hill looking to minimize the damage and keep it within reach for their bottom or the top half of this next inning. 1 1 count, or 0 oh 1 count to Correjo. After that first pitch foul ball down the right field line. Salazar on first base for the Raiders. Wind has picked up just a little here. Flag, you can see, blowing in. Sherburn set. Runners going. Riley unable to make a throw there. as that curveball ran in on Correjo, brought Riley to his right, unable to make a throw around Correjo. Now with Salazar on second base, no outs, Liberty Hill looking to find a way out of this here. Shows bunt, fa high fastball. From Sherburn, brings the count to three and one, I believe, on Correjo. Two one, should have trusted the scoreboard. Now Sherbert set, checks Salazar, goes to the plate, shows Bunt Correjo, unable to lay it down. Brings it to a 2-2 count. Coach Chad Crenton not happy on third base as Correjo's unable, been, been unable to lay down a butt twice tonight. That'll be something he'll be chewed out in in practice this week. Sherburn checking Salazar, goes to the plate. That curveball. Grounded weakly by Correjo, doing a good job of staying alive. Fouled that one in to the Raider dugout. Liberty Hill looking to retire Correjo on this one. Sherburn set. Pitch to the plate. Fastball high, works the count to three and two. Full count for Correjo. Sherburn on the mound for Liberty Hill looking to retire him here. Pitch. 
Grounded back to Sherburn. Sherburn will check Salazar, keep him at second base. Make the throw over to first for out number one here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Now with one out, a little more breathing room for Liberty Hill. Number four, Ryan Tableton. As a pinch hitter, number four, Tableton. I'll have to write that down as he's not on my lineup. Tableton will pinch hit for Lucas or for Joe Sparshoe. Sparshoe, excuse me. Four for, Four for 12. Confirms the Tappleton for Sparshoe. Spar er, Tappleton, excuse me here, will get a attempt at an RBI with a runner in Salazar in scoring position. Sherburn looking to keep Salazar at second base and get the Panthers into the top half of the seventh with only down two. First pitch hit into right field. Sal Stavanoa under it. Salazar will tag. No, he won't. Stavanoa showed a bullet there. Salazar would have tagged. It would have been almost a likely out number three. Now with two outs, Sherburn will have a little bit, uh, again, a little bit more breathing room. Really trying to keep Liberty Hill in within a two-run game here, as that's only a few hits, a few walks, a few steals, a few errors for a few scores here. First pitch here to Sparshu. That one popped up into center field. Dyer looks to be camped under it, calls it, makes the catch for out number three. We are heading to the top of the seventh here at Rouse High School, where Liberty Hill will look to score two and stay in this ball game in this important District 25 5A matchup. I am Jason Hebner, and you are listening to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. The University Interscholastic League would like to thank its corporate sponsors. Without the generous support of these sponsors, many UIL activities would not be possible. The UIL gives special thanks to Balfour, Baylor Scott & White, Dairy Max, Dairy Queen, Ford, Fox Sports Southwest, Gatorade, Hellas Construction, Max Preps, the NFHS Network, Nike, Register My Athlete, Spalding, and Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. These generous corporate sponsors support the UIL in all its activities, music, academics, and athletics. The UIL appreciates these sponsors and their participation in all that the UIL does in Texas extracurricular activities. On behalf of the UIL and its corporate sponsors, thank you for supporting UIL activities in your community and enjoy the game. Welcome back here to Rouse High School Panther fans. Uh, we are looking for a Liberty Hill comeback here. And it looks like they'll start with Durkin, the six-hole hitter. We'll have to score two runs to stay alive in this ballgame. And we're facing the still dominant Andrew Kithill. Kithill. Actually, a pro and con here for Liberty Hill. The pro for Liberty Hill is that Kit Hill has thrown six innings already. He may be a little tired here in his seventh inning of work. The, the, the con, though, is that he has held the Panthers to no earned runs. Only six hits. So we may have a little bit of a trouble here finding some base runners. The leadoff tonight, or leadoff this... The leadoff of this inning, excuse me, will be number 24, Cash Durkin. Durkin unable to reach so far this ball game. We'll look to change that here and bring some momentum to the Panthers' side. Get Hill looking to ha save the complete game shutout here and give the win to the Raiders. First pitch, fastball, strike one to Durkin. Durkin in the box. Pitch here from Kit Hill. That one hit high, out of play back here in the stand. That brings the count to 0-2 and Durkin will have to find a way to stay alive here. Durkin really need really, Durkin really needs to beat reach base here for Liberty Hill. A lead off base runner would help their chances exponentially. Kit Hill working from the windup. 0-2 pitch to Durkin. That fastball hit in the left field. That one looks like it's going to drop. Durkin, round first base. He'll head for two. 
and he's got with a stand-up double to start here at the top of the seventh inning. That's really good for Durkin to see, not just the leadoff here hit, but he's really been struggling at the plate. That's really good for him, especially, to start a hitting streak here against this Roush Raider. Now Maxwell at the plate with Durkin on second base. A hit here should score Durkin and bring the Panthers closer to this game. Kit, Kit Hill, first pitch to Maxwell. Ball in the dirt for ball number one. Cahill may be a little flustered here. That's what base runners does to you, right? Only with a two-run lead, one base runner, one one hit from Maxwell, tie ball game. He's going to be a little flustered. He may not attack the strike zone as much as he has been tonight. Cahill checks Durkin, pitch to the plate. That fastball catches the inside corner for strike number one. One-one count to Maxwell. On deck is Jack Stavano, who's really been swinging the bat well. If Maxwell can reach base. I like the Panthers' chances here. That's a ground ball to second base. Maxwell going to run it as fast as he can. He'll be out at first, but he did move Durkin over. Very important here. And now, runner on third base. Tying run at the plate for Liberty Hill. Jack Stavano will come to the plate. Feels very similar to, this gl to the Glynn game last Friday. Liberty Hill able to score one. They're in the bottom of the seventh to extend the game into the eighth where they won in the bottom of the eighth inning. Home plate umpire will dust off the plate as we may have a few players at the plate this inning if things go Liberty Hill way. And Stavanoa now will step back into the box to face Kitwell. Kitwell taking a sign from Heinrich. Now set. First pitch to Stavanoa. Curveball. Inside for ball number one. Most excited I've heard the Liberty Hill dugout all day, and they have a good reason why. <laughs> Durkin on third base, Stavano at the plate. Kitwell, pitch. That fastball bouncing to Durkin. Durkin will reach, for, will reach home easily, and the Panthers have brought this game to within one. one now. Liberty Hill needs Stavanoa to reach base and a few base hits behind him and this ball game could very well be tied. Kitwell. Hill, excuse me. That one. Grounded by Stavanoa. Foul down the first baseline. We'll bring the count two, two and one. Two and one for Stavanoa. Looking to keep the Panthers in this ball game. Very important District 25-5A matchup. Liberty Hill looking to sweep the season series against Rouse. Kit Hill steps off. He's working from the from the windup now with Durkin scored. Kit, Kit Hill. Pitch to Stavanoa. That one foul tipped by Stavanoa. Brings the count to two and two. Stavanoa back to the plate. 2-2 count here with one out here in the top of the seventh. Liberty Hill needing one to extend this ball game. Pitch. That curveball off the plate brings the count to three and two. Full count to Stavanoa. Kit Hill should very well attack the zone with this one. It's easier said than done. And here's the pitch. That fastball attacks the zone. Stavanoa fouls it out of play down the left field line. Full count for Stavanoa. Trying to find a way on here for Liberty Hill. Full count for Stavanoa. Kit, well, Kit Hill, the pitch here. Fastball, called strike three at the letters. And Liberty Hill will now have one out remaining. Now batting, number one, Carson Riley. 
Now with one out to give, Carson Riley has the plate. Carson Riley looking to keep the game alive for Liberty Hill. Ryan Leary on deck. First pitch to Riley. Curveball outside for ball one. Riley. Liberty Hill down to one out. Pitch from Kit Hill. That one popped into right field. Riley will run it. Solomon is under it. They will make the catch. And that will be the ball game. The Raiders able to hang on to this one. Able to win 2-1 to one in this district matchup. Liberty Hill fans here not happy. So a few decisions here have cost them this ball game. With that, we'll take a short post-game break. And we'll be back with a little analysis here in a minute. I am Jason Hebner, and you listen to Liberty Hill Panther Baseball on Vibe Live. Looking for future leaders we can trust and believe in? Look no further than the high school student athletes right here in Texas. High school sports teach young people how to be effective leaders. It begins by making their grades and being on time for practice. It includes learning to listen, following directions, accepting responsibility, being a good role model. And it's about respect for officials, opponents, the rules, and each other. The result? It transcends sports. It gives us hope for the future. High school sports. There's so much more than just a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back here to Rouse High School, where Liberty Hill unfortunately could not get it done here tonight against the Rouse Raiders at Rouse High School. The game dominated by pitching. Andrew Kit Hill on the Raiders side, able to go the distance, allow only that one earned run after the cast jerk and triple in the top of the seventh. Meanwhile, Connor Shermer allowed two early in the bottom of the first, and then really locked in and was really dominant through then. From the pro, some of the pros of this game we saw was Liberty Hill did compete there in the bot, the top, the bot, top half of the seventh, excuse me, and also Connor Sherburn had a gym in this game. Both teams having pitching gyms, just unable Liberty Hill unable to provide for him, and that just sometimes happens in baseball. We also we'd like to do a final thank you to Academy Sports and Outdoors for being the presenting sponsor of Vibe Live this spring for all the ways you love to play. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your local Academy store. Gear out this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoor. Academy Sports and Outdoors, excuse me. And that about does it here from Rouse High School. We hope you've enjoyed this game. It's a close one. We'd like to invite you to join us on Friday night at home against Cedar Park, where Liberty Hill will look to bounce back, now 5-4 and four in district play, against the currently number 5 state-ranked Timberwolves. Please join us there. For this game, it has been Jason Hebner, my QA, Nate Nunez, and the whole Vibe Life's crew. I'd like to thank you for listening, and have a good rest of your night. Thank you. <laughs>